Yo, we back at it again, even with Patrick Blackwood, and I got my boy, my guy, Jonathan Massacre in the building. What up, what up, what up? Shit, I'm glad to have you here, my guy. Definitely, definitely. It's a pleasure to be here, man. This food looks really immaculate right now in front of oh, us. Oh, yes, man. I am hungry as hell. But we're going to start with a prayer. Absolutely. You want to start off? I'm sure, man. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, this union, this fellowship. We just ask you to please give us strength and nutrients for our mind, body, and soul as we eat this food and all great things that come through your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, Jonathan been on my, my main channel. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of one-on-ones. You know, we have our battles. You know, I want some, he wants some. Well, I want a lot. He really uh, want to go there. We ain't going to go there, but... You know, we, we want some, and he came up with the nickname of Do Double Move Shot It. So, he hits a lot of double moves. You damn right. <laughs> but. Let's go. Let's talk to the camera. Talk to the camera. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, sir, how do you feel coming into this play? Uh, he's tired. <laughs> I don't want to go to sleep, bro. <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was good. Man, you guys, this is a great time because this is my first ever collaboration. Mm -hmm. Well, second ever collaboration. And now I got my guy here. We can just chop it up. So what's, what's been going on with you, bro? Man, you know, a, a lot. I've been traveling a lot, um, seeing what the world has to offer me, a lot of investments. Yeah. Um, I'm into real estate. I have a football athletic background, as you know, as Pat said. Got drafted by the Atlanta Falcons, so the A-Town is my home. Um, fortunately, I've been able to come back over the years, and now I reside here. So it's been a great move. Um, making money moves here in Atlanta, traveling abroad, Learning new things and bringing it back to the crew. I feel that. Not only that, happy belated birthday, man. Man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, King, what's up? I see you doing your damn thing on Instagram. Man, champagne Flex. showers is the best on your birthday. Flex God. I highly, I highly advise it. Flex God. Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> he Flex God. He here posing. Mm -hmm. GQ'd out. You uh -huh. feel me? Uh huh. Uh huh. I feel that, bro. Well, you know what? If y'all want to follow me, check me out at IMJ Massacre and you can see more exclusive photos. Absolutely. How's that food right there? Bro. Oh, man. I forgot. I'm so sorry, guys. Mm. We got Spanish rice, mm. black beans. Mm. I got my baked chicken with some corn and cob. Mm. You know I love my corn and cob. And I got my salad. Mm. Mm. How it is over with you? Yeah, so... The food is really good. I'm actually a vegetarian. So uh, my dietary requirements is a little bit different than peas. Right. But right now the black beans, man, they're phenomenal. The Spanish rice put together really well. And the potatoes, the garlic is, ooh, is banging. <laughs> banging, banging. You feel me? Mm. So what's going wow. on with football, my guy? Man, a lot. You know, uh, I played five years in the league. Got drafted in 2012. Right. As I said, to the hometown Atlanta. Played three years here. Started two out of my three years. And from there, I got traded to the Tennessee Titans. Okay. Where I was just recently living for about five years. How was that? It was a great experience. You know, I got down there and I needed surgery. And so, uh, you know, that was unfortunate because I didn't get to shine as bright as, as I knew I needed to shine down there. Right. So the recovery process was, it was excruciating. You know, um, I would never want anybody to go under the knife. And if you do, make sure you ha your head is in the place so you can recover fast. Right. But Nashville is a great city, beautiful, small but big city. I definitely recommend anyone to go down there, check it out. Broadway, the Mummering Street. I mean, the culture is really nice down there. If you love live music, if you love hot chicken. Oh, mm. You need to go check it out. So uh, it was a great experience. You know, went down there, did my thing. And from there, I got let go. And then I tra um, transitioned to the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. And so uh, that was a great experience. You know, uh, they're, uh, as you all know, they're Super Bowl champs or previous Super Bowl champs before the last ones. Yeah. And um, it was a great, you know, I, I got under there. I was under Andy Reid. And he's a great coach. 
Great guy. Yeah, just unfortunately, I still wasn't recovered from my shoulder surgery. I so it was kind of, like I said, it was bittersweet. You know, those last two locations that I was at, Tennessee and, and Kansas City, I didn't really get to go down there and shine like I know the star I am. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. I have a lot of fans out here. 96% female, right? Mm -hmm. But I want them to understand about this football transition. Yeah. What it takes to be an athlete, what kind of training we do, and not only that, what kind of mental state that we have to be in. Man, well, you have to be in such a such a great mindset and a state of mind because you know what? This training thing isn't just to have a nice physique or, you know, go out there and put on a nice shirt and it feels good. Maybe on the back end, but on the front end, you know, uh, it's excruciating. You know, we put in dog sweat hours, you know, and you really don't know when your opportunity is coming. And really that's where your optimism, your faith and your belief in your process comes in. And so if you rally a group of people around you, like the team we have at U48, yeah. by the way, check out U48 Fitness if you're in Gwinnett County. Come pull up on us because we're training hard and we're getting guys into the league. Absolutely. And so uh, the training, like I said, is excruciating. You know, uh, you put in the dog hours, dog days. You don't know when the opportunity is coming, but it's all right here. And as long as you are focused on your end goal, you know what? The means represents the ends. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's facts. But it's hard work, though. You got to wake up early. Listen. Got to eat right. Got to, you know what? Can't go out with the boys all the time. And you know what? That is true. That late night call that comes in, I can't take that neither. That is true. Yeah, so it's a lot of sacrifices along the way. And um, you know what? But it's all worth it once you get there. Let me tell you this. And I'm going to be real with you. Mm -hmm. When I was in Florida, I had it hard. Because the one thing, you know how like you had a certain mindset that you think that people will have the same mindset as you mm -hmm. and think they're going to work just like you. Right. And it's not like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, shit, everything that I've done, it's out of the mud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything out of the mud. I had one offer. Mm -hmm. I was Marshall. I, I could have went to UF. Right. But Urban Meyer stepped down. Mm -hmm. He got sick mm -hmm. that year. Mm -hmm. So I had one offer. And that's a preferred walk on. Mm. So everything was just out the mud. Right. Nobody didn't believe in me. Mm. Yeah. And then you got people that surround you just bad influence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your environment is really important. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I try to actually really spread positivity to stay away from, like, bad mind people and just keep grinding. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's tough. Mm. What was one of your biggest obstacles or up-to-date obstacles you had to kind of overcome to, you know, be in this position, you know, having a following and uh, creating content and, you know, essentially, football, you know, carving out your new lane? Um, it's tough because it's actually mentally, your, your mind talks to you a lot. So sometimes you just have to shut down the mind and just believe in what you, what you have mm -hmm. in yourself and your mm -hmm. soul. And before... It took me a while to understand that when I got that workout from the Cleveland Browns and knowing the fact that I wasn't getting enough footage of myself. That's why I, I created this platform so I can get more footage of myself. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that was the most powerful thing because if nobody's not watching you, then what the fuck? You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's understandable. So how long are you down here in Georgia for? Shit. Um, I would say not, probably not a month and a half. Mm, mm. Now, how, where is that transition? You going back to the crib, back to Florida? Yeah, yeah. I got some projects I'm going to do. I want to do some more creating projects with other athletes. Nice. I want to do more, touch on to the youth, actually. People that never got their shine, and they actually working hard and putting them on the spotlight, too. That's cool. That's cool, man. I really like that. Giving back, uh, giving back to the people who are yeah. kind of walking that beaten path, you know, and kind of dealing with the same challenges you've dealt think, with. Think about it. Being in the inner city, don't have anything else to do, and you just, that's your only way out. Broward, Broward County, right? Broward County, Broward yeah. County, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. What was, uh, what was it like growing up down there? Like, is yeah, the environment, tough. like, is it, uh, 
Is it a high vibrational first, environment? First, first of all, I was I was actually I was actually raised in Dade County. I was raised in actually around like Liberty City. Oh wow. Ogulaka. Oh wow. Those tough areas. Oh wow. So yeah, those areas is like either you 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 really not really banging, but it's kind of like they have their own section of areas. Mm-hmm. If you go in that section of area. You gonna have problems. Mm, mm. It's the same thing like in California. You go to Cranshaw, you gonna have problems in Cranshaw. Yeah, depending on what area you're from. Right. Okay. So it's the same thing. How do, how how do how do people? Is it like a certain tone or an undertone that people can just tell that you're from like cross nah, the lines nah. or what? They're just seeing because they they familiar with faces. So they familiar it's, with their own. Yeah, they familiar with so much faces to a point like, oh yeah, we know that you're not from this area. Oh wow. Hmm. And then it's either they're gonna press you or they're gonna try to do something. Like they're gonna try to take something from you. Wow. Have you been in a situation like that? Yeah. Oh, wow. I actually Speak been on that. I've been actually been robbed. Oh wow. I was a kid, I was eight years old. Me and my uncle my uncle had his own like he was a actually vegetarian. Mm. And he didn't have a regular nine to five. He was actually selling food to bring his kids to college. Right. Pay tuition. Mm-hmm. So that's when my, my older cousin and my other cousin was like 18, the other one was like 16. And God came into the backyard, pulled the sliding door, had me on gunpoint. At eight? At eight. Wow, mm-hmm. what can an eight year old do to you? Why would they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was about like 20, 21. I was eight years old. He put me on gunpoint and said, lay down on the floor. Oh, wow. Mm. My uncle ran out, uh, ran out the door with his money. Everything, bro. He left you? Yeah. Oh, wow. My grandfather was with me. My other my other cousin was on the floor mm. with me. Yeah. So, what happened? I mean, did the... the, the they searched the house. Mm-hmm. My older cousin was in the shower. She did. They checked the shower. They checked every room to see if there's any money. Wow. And the other person had the gun to my head. So the eight-year-old, not your grandfather, just the eight-year-old. Yeah. He must have had you as hostage, like nobody moved. Yeah, nobody moved. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. So does that experience, like, does that traumatize a person? That can't on? that can't traumatize anybody because now you just you can't trust anybody. Now oh, you wow. face just the way you move, people could be like scheming. Mm. So when you think about it like this, it's the wrong way to think. I, Absolutely wrong way to think. In Florida, not a lot of people is nice. Mm. You know how like Southern hospitality in Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, yeah. I'm, Tennessee. Yeah. I'm nice those guy, yeah. those are Southern hospitality. When you right, go to Florida, right. people's mean mugging you. They ain't trying to talk to you like that. I'm just being serious because that's just how they are. Mm. Because they know like people will test you or they don't try to rob or they try to do this. Right. Just wow. a scheme. Wow, wow. Man, well, you know what? Shout out to all my people in Florida still uh, standing 10 toes down, oh, yeah, two feet sure. on the ground and, and surviving out there because, you know, a lot of people don't understand what's happening right now in our personal sectors in America and uh, what people go through. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, I really appreciate you telling that story. You know, how how was it? How was it kind of like, you know, how was it acclimating back into the family? Like, as far as, like, your uncle, did he say anything? Like, my did, uncle you, have, had, did you have, like, beef? To, like, did you, you, you know, was it like, what did hits, you think about it? He kind of what was up. What's home, that what hits me home now is, like, after I went to school at Marshall University, and I got the phone call three days before I went to the school, mm-hmm. my mom called me and said, hey, your uncle died. That touched me because... This man used to raise me, watch me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's the same people that killed him. Wow. Yeah. The same people? <laughs> yeah. Was he in debt? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. And the funny thing is, he moved to a different house. That means they've been watching him. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So, you got to care about gunpoint. Middle of the road. Hmm. And that's close to... uh. Miami Dolphin Stadium, Hard Rock wow. Stadium. Oh wow! Mm. Wow, man, interesting, interesting. Yeah, bro. Well, rest in peace, the uncle. You know, um, but hey, you know what? You're here now. 
Absolutely. You're a living testimony of that experience. And what you do now is a reflection of what you what you what you experience. As, exactly. This is why I tell everybody that they, we're creating our own book. We are on we are our own legends. We it doesn't matter if you can see the Beyonce, the Jay-Z's, the Drake's. We all we are our legends at the end of the day because we're creating our own chapter. Mm, mm. That's beautiful, man. I really like that. I really like that. So, you, I mean, you don't like Georgia as home? Yeah, Georgia's nice. Yeah, it's Georgia's cool, nice. man. Is this your first time over here since yeah, you Yeah, it's, it's no. I actually traveled here in October with me and my friend, and I just act a minute with it because it's like, damn, it's nice. Mm. It's really nice. Yeah. Damn. So, well, you know, we wouldn't mind having you here in Georgia. You know, you already got a crew of good men around you. Oh, yeah. It's going to help you out. It's going to push you and help support you, man. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, so your fans that's out here, you know, um, tell them a little bit about what your diet looks like. What, you know, um, what keeps you motivated? Okay. What keeps you going after it? So, my diet is like, I have a plant-based diet slash... You know, I have my chicken. He got cheat day. Oh yeah, I have my cheat day. That or cheat days. Day, I I do have my cheat days. My cheat days is absolutely on my YouTube channel. They already know I don't play. Mm -hmm. But um, honestly, I have various ways. I'm very disciplined. So if I say, hey, I want to cut down rice, mm -hmm. I literally will cut down rice for four days. Oh, and wow. Just eat greens and this right. mean protein. Mm -hmm. That's just how I do it. Right. Or. I can have my little carbs. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do carbs this day. I have my moments to be like, there's, I have various of variations mm -hmm. of when my meals and I have different types of my body change right. each, every month or right, each right, year. Right, right, right. And I went through these stages because I'm like, okay, I wanna try this, mm -hmm. I wanna try that. Mm -hmm. Before I, I was a vegan for five, about 10 years. Oh, wow. In high school, when wow. I started in high school, I haven't eaten no red meat since. Wow. Huh. So I can switch back to vegan anytime. Wow. So you do you miss the red meat? Well, you do red meat here or there, or you no. this is completely out of your diet? Out of my diet. No, oh, wow. Wow. Why, why make that change, that transition? At first, um, my my family was Rastafarian. So they don't eat red meat. Oh, they roster fire. Yeah, they don't they eat red roster, meat. Roster. They don't eat fish or anything like that. Oh wow! So, wow, that's just, so true. Roster fire. Yeah, religion. yeah, yeah. Why? Why? Your pops got long hair. Not my pops. It's my mom's. Oh wow. Okay, cool. Wow. So she is diehard roster fire. Yeah. Wow, man. Shout out to moms. Yeah. That's what's up. What about the food, man? The food, it's tough, bro. Mm. At first, when I was younger, my auntie used to force me to eat tofu and all that. Just yeah, I couldn't eat it. Couldn't eat it. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. It was it was hard because when you different. if you if you adapt to like eating red meat when I was younger and eating chicken and ain't trying to eat this food, right? Man, it's tough. Yeah, I get it. It was real tough, mm. but now it's like yo. I, when I changed from my ninth grade then, during t this time, it was easy. Mm. It was easy because I was like, okay, I know what I want, so I'm gonna do this. Wow! So when you put your mind to it, you just you just do it. You just, you just do had it. that discipline. No, I get that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what's up. Well, as far as my diet, um, I'm gonna let Pete eat. Uh, I've been a vegetarian slash vegan for about six years. And the reason why I transitioned my diet was because one night while living in Nashville, Tennessee, as y'all know, I said I lived, playing for the Titans, I went to a restaurant called Jeff Ruby Tuesdays. It's all, okay, I it's heard all, about that. It's off Commerce and Union Street. Go okay. check it out. They have a pianist that plays behind the bar. Okay. It's an elegant environment. I definitely recommend you go there by yourself or bring a plus one. But I went there <clears throat> and... After I ate dinner there, I went home. And that night, I had one of the worst nightmares I ever had. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't so much of how bad the nightmare was, but, yeah. but how vivid it seemed to me like I was experiencing traumatized me. So what you had out there? <laughs> I, had the big, I had the biggest steak on the menu. Shit. I had me some, some mashed potatoes. 
And of course, you know, I had me a few veggies on the side. Um, at the time, I usually, I used to eat my red meat medium rare. You know, um, a lot of people just like it rare. I like it medium rare, you know, because if the cut is nice. But I was like, I woke up the next morning and, and I was like, man, you know, that was a that was an interesting dream. Right. I didn't think anything of it, you know, even though it was still burning in the back of my mind how crazy that dream was. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let me conduct a little experiment. Let me go back to the same restaurant the following week. Right. Order the same thing and see if I would have the same experience. Mm. And when I went there and ate that same exact meal, mm. the time difference wasn't too much, too far apart from where I went the the um, the, um, the last week. But man, I had another dream that night. Damn, I had another dream that night. And after I had that dream, I told myself no more red meat. I've never looked back since. And the way I transitioned was I stopped eating red meat, but then I kept chicken and turkey, right. my turkey in my diet. Okay. And so, and also fish. And so after about a month of doing that, I would take away one protein. Mm. So, so this is an easy transition for anyone that's out there looking to switch up their diet. Uh, like I said, I took red meat out of my diet. I kept those four proteins. I did fish, chicken, and ground turkey, excuse me, three. And then after 30 days, I would take away chicken. And then it would just be ground turkey and fish. Okay. And after another 30 days, I would take away ground turkey. And then with the last 30 days, it was just fish. And then I took that out. The further I was away from the protein that was you know, like a chicken, a ground turkey, or meat. Right. The further I could get away and be like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. And after I did that, I stayed disciplined for about six years. Um, every once in a while, I might jump off the reservation and have me a nice piece of salmon. You know, salmon it's really fresh. Good. Yes, full of a lot of zinc, full of a lot of um, omega-3s. And it's also delicious if it's cooked right, either with some avocado oil Ooh. or, yeah, or check this out, some truffle oil. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a little secret. Shh, shh. If you touch down in Fort Lauderdale, I'm going to take you to this restaurant. Okay. It's right next to the water. In Fort Lauderdale Beach, yeah. you see the boats. Oh, wow. But they got this nice ass. What's it called? Um, I'm actually going to be in Miami this weekend. So if you're down there, the me. Oh, shit. It's in Fort Lauderdale, it's in East Commercial. Mm. I don't remember the damn name. You don't remember the name, but... It's you really good. No, you it, need to go check it out. <laughs> it's, really it's really good. It's going to tap back into me. It used to be my, one of my favorite go-to restaurants. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. I like those go-to restaurants, you know. You and it's like, in. it's really nice. You have like the indoor, outdoor. Yeah. You got a nice little, like the turf mm. outside. You got the seats. You mm. actually have the real view of the water. See the yachts come out, the bridge up. Yeah, it's a nice scene. Yeah, it's basically like a Rick Ross music video. Yep. You know, I like that. I like Beautiful that. Beautiful scene. So, you know, outside of football, outside of eating well and healthy, like, you know, where do you see yourself impacting, you know, using your skills, you, you know, um, benefiting, you know, the community? Where do you see yourself flourishing? I want to say with the kids. Nice. Nice. Is there a certain age group or the youth in general? This is with the with the youth in general. Not only that, my baby's watching me. My niece is watching me, so I had to. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I had to do the, the youth, man. Like. Yeah. They touch home with me because they. You know, you gotta think about this. They evolving. They they born in this era. Mm, so mm, they mm. used to the the technology. Yeah. So they helping us grow. Right. 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 You feel me? So. I want to at least make sure they're good mm. at the end of the day because they are the future. Mm. Mm. That's so true. That's so true. They are the future. That's so true. And we just need to really stand up and actually embrace that and really help them out. Mm. It's not about us. It's not me, me, me. We actually need to get on the platform. Right, 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 right. 
help really pave the way for them. Yeah. So that way, when they're looking for their way, they can actually exactly. settle and go down the right path. It's, it's the same way how, if you think about it like this, you know how like people know a secret mm -hmm. and they pick a certain people that they share this secret mm -hmm. and they pay that way. Why not we can do that mm -hmm. as people? I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of money that we can we can make together. There's a lot of money out there. Yeah, absolutely. But the biggest myth and lie is there that there's not a lot of money out there. That you gotta jump through these loops. You gotta. I just think it's do so much. It's so much ego. Yeah. Well, let's touch base on ego. What do you consider ego? To be honest. I'm mean, gonna use this as an example. Like I told you, if I have an information, right? Let's say, like, I have an information and I can help you out. Right. And I have all the guys that's there, but mm -hmm. I'm holding that information from you. Right. Why would I do that? Man, competition. Yes, it's competition, but mm -hmm. then again, if we're not on the same position. I got you. Why would I wanna hold that thing from you? If that's gonna propel you, where you need to go. Right, right, right. It's like this. We all connect this puzzle. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the same thing like we do a 40. Of course, we're not going to lock down and get the same transition. Right. We're not going to, we don't learn the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So you don't get every puzzle, but this one puzzle, you might not know. Right. But I know. Right. Why not I share that knowledge with you? You're right. You're right. Why not? What do y'all think? Comment below. Y'all let us know. That's interesting. I think ego is, uh, I like to break it down in an acronym. Etching God out. Right. Pretty cool. You know, because uh, ego is, ego is that inner person that tells you that, you know what? I deserve this because not only of my status, but also because of the, the work that I put in that no one saw. Right. And so when you get resistance against the things you believe you deserve, right. but there's a different criteria, it could be a challenge for someone to adapt who feels as though they already fit the mold and the position. Okay, I get what you're saying. It's you like what I'm this. saying? It's like saying, there's a person that knows the answer to the test, mm -hmm. but not raise their hand. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Right. Easy. Easy. You know? And just fold it. Yeah. And just fold it. So, you know, uh, that's interesting. I, I, we do deal with a lot of ego in society. You know, uh, honestly, if we just took ego out the room, you know, you'll be so amazed with the type of person, not only that you're becoming, but the real version of you. Absolutely. You know? But that's super cool, man. That's super cool. You know, sports, food, eating well. You know, all these things are part of a, a healthy lifestyle and actually an embitterment of you. Right. I think at the end of the day, we need to understand that we shouldn't identify with the person who we once were, but start identifying with the person we're becoming. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So that's cool. That's cool, Absolutely. man. That's cool. Yeah. So tell me about this the NFL, though, bro. Like, I know you got hurt. Mm-hmm. And you try to get back in. Mm hmm So what's the next move? So it's a good thing you asked. So I'm actually still in the arena of football. Okay. I'm an agent. Um, I still have him on salary. Um, but my agent, you know, I just spoke to him last week, and I'm actually on a lot of team shortlist board, which means they have a board, and there's a shortlist of guys that they're willing to bring in for a tryout. And right now, good for me being a veteran, a lot of NFL teams are looking for veterans because the learning curve isn't as as strenuous as dealing with a rookie first year coming in. Right. So guys like me are hot right now, which because of COVID, appreciate that, even <laughs> though COVID has done so much bad, but right. it's reset the country. It's giving people a different global optic at, you know, giving other people opportunities, you know, and grooming other people. So uh, it's been great. I'm actually looking forward to going back um, for camp at the end of July. Um, 
I've already professed it. I've already declared it. You know, I know that's going to happen for me currently right now outside of the NFL as I as I patiently weigh and I grind it out and I manifest it every day. I'm into real estate. You know, uh, I'll be finishing up my real estate exam here at the end of June. And that is an I appreciate it. It's an accolade that, uh, man, I've been working towards the last, uh, I'll probably say the last 90 days. Mm. So I passed the course exam, which is, uh, I took an accelerated two week class. Okay. Um, which you can check it out. Barney Fletcher, um, great real estate school here down in Georgia. Love it. Um, shout out to my teacher, Lou, uh, Lee Diddy. Uh, he is a funny, funny guy, but he would definitely, uh, he would definitely teach you a lot about real estate. Mm. And so, uh, as I come to a close here at the end of June, I'm looking forward to attaching that, um, you know, to my title. And so, once I get back to the league, I'll be a real estate agent, and I would have done so much that you know what, me getting back into the real world of transitioning, it won't be so tough. Absolutely. Yeah. Not only that, I already sports said, bro, you're starting. You're man. starting, bro. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that, man. Outside linebacker. Yeah, bro. man, I appreciate that. You working. And if you want to get the ones, bro, you know. Listen, me. listen. <clears throat> you see how he ain't drink nothing over there, right? You feel me? See, you see that? He ain't drink nothing over there. You know why? Because <laughs> I, hey, because I be, I be getting them out on the nah. field. <laughs> don't let don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. You know, don't let them fool you. Nah, it ain't happening. Come on, man. Come on. But you know what? This food was immaculate. It was really good. It was really really good. You know, y'all don't see the chef here right now, but she's actually downstairs. But one thing you would tell somebody to not give it up on their dream, man. Before we close out. One thing I'll uh, tell someone not to give up on their dreams is there's two types of pain in this world. There's pain of regret and there's pain of discipline. And if you give up on your dreams, you'll be dealing with pain of regret. But if you don't give up on your dreams, you'll be dealing with the pain of discipline. And that pain of discipline will actually put you in a better position to be happier than a pain of regret. Right now, go sit in the, go sit in any elderly home and go speak to an elderly person and talk to them about their life. And I guarantee you, um, I guarantee you probably like one out of five of them, two out of five of them, three out of five of them will tell you, man, I regret this, this, and the third. Man, I wish I would have did this. Man, I wish I would have pushed a little harder. Man, I wish I would have. Don't be one of those people. So my advice to you, wherever place you're in right now, don't matter if you're down or up. If you're down, you can get up. And if you're up, you can stay up. But understand, pain of regret or pain of discipline. I choose to be pain of discipline. Because at the end of the day, once that pain is gone, I'm going to be right where I want to be, laying right in my, right in the grass of my dreams. Absolutely. Literally. Absolutely. I'm yeah. with that. I'm yeah. with that. Word, word. I'm with that. But I want to say thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. He will have his own YouTube channel for sure. And much love, y'all. Hey, man. Peace.